Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be taking a look and reviewing the trade deadline with our friend Sam Smith. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Sam's channel. He covers everything Bruins all the way from each and every game. He commentates on them all, so be sure to check him out. And I'm pretty sure he will not be streaming tomorrow night's game because he will be there, but there will be a vlog, so also be sure to check that out. Yeah. So Sam, let's start it off here. Uh, who is your biggest winner from today's tra trade deadline? I mean, how could it not be Vegas? Uh, Vegas killed it. Um, overall, not even just today, but this week, uh, they just did really well with the taking advantage of the salary cap due to LTIR and adding on and loading up for trying to defend their throne. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you even look at it, right? With the hurdle deal today, he starts on LTIR. You had Hannafin as well, Mantha earlier. Those guys are going to be high, high-end caliber players for the Vegas Golden Knights, especially when it comes to playoff time. Hurdle apparently might be back for the regular season, although it is hard to estimate that. He's right around that cusp, right? We're looking at another Kucherov yep. situation where he's sort of right on that area where it could be, but it might not be. So that's another interesting one. As well, I think let's talk about the Colorado Avalanche. They're a team that's sort of made a couple of sort of under the wire moves acquiring Casey Middlestat and Walker those two guys I think are really really crucial players Walker will replace uh, Bowen Byram as well as Middlestat replacing Ryan Johansson so two really good moves I'd love to get your thoughts as well uh yeah I think the Avalanche did really well here they did they upgraded in their center's position which they were lacking a little bit because Landis scog has been out for a little for a, for a while uh, they got a really good guy in, Buff in Buffalo from Buffalo and Casey Middlestat. The Sabres loved him. Uh, he was one of the crucial parts to their team for a long time, so it's good to get him. Sean Walker, a uh, defenseman who's kind of hopped around a little bit, started off in the LA Kings organization, ended up in Philly. Um, hasn't really had a, a full-on home, I think, with Colorado. He'll be good. And they also did really well here by getting Brandon Duheim from the Minnesota Wilds, another guy that uh, they did really well here for – relatively cheap so overall the avalanche they did really good today uh, and this week and i think we're we're destined for a colorado vegas western conference final yeah 100 percent agree that's and that'll make for a heck of a match if i gotta say right oh, those well. two teams are gonna battle it out right to the end especially with vegas sort of in that wild cardish spot as of today um which was really surprising i mean if you don't check the standings very often it's like they they started off a little rough, but man, they they're gonna have some serious climb in this in these next few weeks as we make it towards the final play or the start of the playoffs. And then there's two more teams here I want to talk about: Winnipeg and New York. Winnipeg with Miller, Toffoli, and Monahan. All three of those players were basically pretty solid acquisitions. I really like the addition of Colin Miller, former Bruin, as we probably can both attest to. But man, mm -hmm. is uh, is it, it was a good day for the Winnipeg Jets, eh? Yeah, they, they had a really good day, really good past few weeks. Adding Sean Monahan, who has exploded with the Jets ever since he showed up. And then today, getting to Foley at 50% retained for two picks. Uh, that is a steal. To Foley is a scoring threat in the top six in any team in the NHL. And to Foley only bolstering that high octane Winnipeg offense. And I think that. The Jets did well. They ran into some situations in the past week or two where they're kind of like struggling a little bit. Um, but they're finally they're finding their groove with Toffoli, who start, again started off in the LA Kings organization. I was a big Manchester Monarchs kid. Loved those guys. Loved Colin Miller. Loved Tyler Toffoli. So it's really cool to see them back on the same team for the third time with the with the uh, the Winnipeg Jets. So overall. Um, Shovel day off and uh, all those guys over in Winnipeg should be really proud of what they did, what they pulled together today. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll probably see Toffoli slide in on that top line besides Shifley and and um, and Kyle Connor as well. Those are that's sort of where I expect him to go. There's also that mm -hmm. second line where he could slide in quite nicely. Now let's talk about the New York Rangers. Obviously, we're both Bruins fans here. Sam has an amazing channel on the Bruins. Let's talk about some uh, some conference rivalries here where, where if Boston is going to make it to the Stanley Cup final this year, probably one of the biggest teams that they'll have to go through. Yeah, the Rangers, I mean, they were good before and they only got better. Uh, they Adding a guy like Alex Wenberg is going to help you win the Stanley Cup. He is a, a middle six threat. Seattle knew this. 
Columbus knew this. Wemberg is a good scorer, man. He's going to be a really good asset to that team. Um, Jack Rosselvick, I mean, for what they gave up, that's a good deal right there. And Rosselvick has struggled with the Blue Jackets, but the Blue Jackets have struggled as a whole. If you put him in a team with a team like the Rangers in the third line, let's say, with uh, Lafreniere and, and Capo Caco, let's say, right? That's a that's a really good cheat code of a third line. Uh, Nick Patan, I'm assuming he'll be with the Hartford Wolfpack, so I'm not really too worried about that too much. Uh, Chad Ruidl, that's a good defenseman to have for depth purposes for the for the Rangers. I think their decor is already good. They have Lindgren, Fox, um, Schneider, Truba. They're going to be good defensively. I think he's a good uh, seventh defenseman for that Rangers team. For sure. And I think Patan as well. He has the he has the opportunity, I think, to sort of slide in that fourth line role. Probably yeah. that 13th forward, right? Where if they have an off night where they need a little bit of grit, that's where a guy like Nick Nick Patan comes really in. And okay, as we transition here, let's talk about the Bruins. What happened today? Are we happy? Are we angry? Where are we at right now? Uh so I like the additions that we had but I feel as if it wasn't enough. I mean, Pat Maroon, I chuckled. I'm not even going to lie. I literally saw it and went, oh, okay, it's going to be one of those days. Maroon getting uh, to the to the Bruins for a conditional sixth-round pick and Luke Toporowski. Luke Toporowski was a pretty decent prospect for the Bru- for Providence. He was doing pretty good down there. Um but he's going back home to Iowa with Iowa Wild, where he's going to presumably start. Um, and I think it's going to be good for him to go back home. That conditional sixth-round pick is only even sent if uh, the Maroon plays in a playoff game this spring. And for Pat Maroon, uh, this... Last night against Toronto, you saw the Bruins actually come out and play physical. That was the most physical I'd ever seen the Bruins this season, Right. In a regular season game, I did not expect that. They came out and gave it, gave it their all. Charlie Coyle giving hits. Uh, Parker Wotherspoon, who got an extension today, congrats to him. He threw a couple of big hits. Uh, adding a guy like Pat Maroon, that's going to bolster that physicality type play that you're going to get when you presumably, as long as everything holds up, play Toronto in the first round. Um, you, you're destined to have at least a couple of altercations between Ryan Reeves and Pat Maroon. And I think you needed a guy like that. So that's, that's a good ad for the Bruins for Pat Maroon. For sure. And I mean, even just what they gave up, it really isn't that much for a guy that's been there, done that playoff experience, championship pedigree, you know, he's, he's right. And he's been there. He's done it with a bunch of different teams too. Right. So it's, as much as, you know, he might be a, an enforcer type player. And we even saw it last night, right. He's, he's going to fight but he's going to win those fights. And when you look at the guys who fought last night, you know, wasn't exactly the guys you want to be fighting with McAvoy. Um, there was one other one who I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, it was Wathers, but he fought for Tusi. Right. And, and once again, those are the kind of guys you probably don't want fighting. You want your big enforcer guys like a Frederick or for example, a Pat Maroon to be out there, sort of be patrolling yeah. guys, much like, you know, Bertuzzi was or Ty Do- or not Ty Domi, Max Domi. Um, yeah, you know, eh, what's the difference nowadays anyway? They play the same game. Uh, okay, now let's talk about the uh, Columbus-Boston deal with Peak Zaboral in a 2027 third pick. So I saw... So Peak for Zaboral... Zaboral was never going to be an NHL-level defenseman with this team. Uh, we drafted him all the way back in 2015 in that disastrous draft. Uh, but... He's been kind of in and out of even Providence's lineup, which it was concerning, and I kind of figured he was going to get moved. Um, he's going to be starting off with the Cleveland Monsters in the AHL. Um, he's probably going to get consistent minutes there. Um, you know, it sucks because, you know, I liked Zaboral until I didn't. You know what I mean? Like a couple of years ago when he was um, coming in with his own, I was like, oh, yeah, I think this guy could be pretty good. And then, it kind of never worked out, and it's just like, you know, it, it took him eight years to finally figure out, oh, well, I don't really have a roster spot here. 
and they and they found a right spot for him with Columbus. Andrew Peak, I read a really interesting stat today. It was that he out of the out of a group of about 400 players uh, that played the last three seasons, Andrew Peak ranks sixth in blocks per 60 minutes and 35th in hits per 60 minutes. So we have a fiscal defenseman, which is something we've been lacking because we only really have McAvoy as a def- as a like a physical defenseman, and uh, he knows how to block shots, which is really good. He averages about six blocks a game, so and six hits a game. So it's a no brainer. Yeah, his salary cap is is AAV was a little high for them not to retain with the Bruins cap situation, which I know we'll probably get into in a minute. But um, overall. Uh, I thought peak it was a good addition. Now the third round pick, I cringed because I went, okay, no salary retention, but you gave up a third. Oof, you know what I mean. That's a, that. That's my thoughts on that. But overall, the acquisitions coming in are are solid. Yeah, important important to also note there that when they first reported that trade, it was a one for one peak for Zaboral, no salary retention. And then sure enough, the third round pick got added when Columbus actually posted the, the like the graphic yep. for it. And then they're all like taking their words back. And that's what that, I originally, when I saw that, I'm like, oh, they retained salary. That's why the third pick's there. But sure enough, it wasn't. Now, okay, let's, the you sort of brought it up. Let's talk about the LTIR um, movement for uh, Derek Forbert for one, as well as the Bruins overall cap situation. Uh, it's a mess to, to put it bluntly. Um the Bruins, so I was saying on my stream, because I was covering the deadline today, like you were as well, I said, all right, uh, peaks here, great. Uh, we're over a million and a half. Uh, um, we're going to have to make a move here. And they didn't. And I was like, okay, something's going on here. And then uh, it was announced in Sweeney's press conference today, that, uh, Bruins GM Don Sweeney, that, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's done for the year. He's got multiple injuries. He was playing on a play through it. Um, so forwards year's done. So then they put him on LTIR, which makes him cap compliant. Which to me is the taking the taking the easy, lazy way out um of this. Uh Forbert's not gonna resign. I doubt he will, especially with what he really gave for the money he got. No. Um I feel the same about Matt Grizzlick. I don't think he resigns. I don't think the Bruins are gonna resign him, but that's a we'll discuss that another time. Uh, but they they needed to get cap compliant. They didn't do a salary dump like I expected them to do today. Um, getting rid of any of the four DeBrusque, Grizzlick, Olmark, or Forbert, all of them are still here after the deadline. And it kind of surprised me. I'm not. I'm gonna be blunt. I'm. It caught me off guard. I didn't think that was gonna happen. I at least thought one of them was gonna be moved today, and we didn't see any of them move. Yeah, and and speaking of guys that we both I think thought might have been moved. Sock about Linus Allmark still in the Boston Bruin colors. Are we surprised by that, considering that they tried to move him at the at, to the LA Kings? Um, no, I'm not surprised. I'd say, but I definitely wouldn't have been surprised if they did move him. It was it was like whatever they do, it won't shock me. If they move him, I understand for for salary cap, but if, but if they don't, I also get it because you want to keep that goalie tandem for this playoff run and. I think that the, your goaltending has been your backbone the entire year. So why shake it when, you, when it's rolling? Um, there was a deal apparently in place for the Kings. Dubois was involved. Olmark said no. He didn't. He was not going to waive his no move clause in his contract, and that's it. Um, there's not really much to it. He kind of just said, "No, I don't want to move. I want to stay with the Bruins." And uh, at least through this year, I do think he gets traded this summer. Um, unless they win the cup, then I don't think so. Um, uh, but I still think they're going to roll with Swayman as of next year. Um, Swayman's going to be their starter next year. And I think Brandon Bussey is going to be the backup to Swayman next year. And Swayman's going to get that massive payday either soon this summer. I don't know. I think Swayman gets about a six or $7 million contract per season. I think, um, for, for a long term, like five or six, maybe seven years. Yeah, also important to note there, he is headed towards arbitration as well. So he is basically going to, he will most likely at least get his payday. 
uh, in some yeah. capacity because there's no way Boston can find a way around that. He's no way make the money. Allmark, in my opinion, will be off to maybe New Jersey. They made a couple goaltending moves today. I do still think that they are looking for their goaltender. You could sort of tell, obviously, with Markstrom floating around as well. That name was floating around all day today. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they held on to him too. So with that being said, lots of trades today. Bruins, uh, I'm, Sam, I'm going to get to your trade grades for the Bruins today. We'll start with the Maroon deal for the conditional sixth and Toporowski. I want to give a B, I thought the trade was good. Um, Maroon is again going to give a good uh, bolster of their. Uh, it's going to bolster their fourth line with uh, anywhere of Laco Razzo if he's if he's still in the postseason if he's still was still with us by not by then or and Jasper Boquist who has come into his own finally uh, this in the past like twenty or so games. And um, I think the fourth line's in good hands. Uh, he is a pending UFA, so I wonder how that's going to look like. If it's going to be another rental or if it's going to be like, hey, we're going to keep you here for a little bit longer with another extension. So overall, I'll give it about a B. Yeah, and let's go with the peak deal. Peak Saboral in a third. I, I'm going to give it a C because um, I the, th the third bumped it down. If it was peak for Saboral... We're bet we're back at a B, but that third round pick with no salary retention, that's a C for me. Yeah. And I completely agree with all that. And finally the LTIR move. That's an A. That's a given. You had to what what's our what's our joke? He's a he's a pylon because pylon. Yeah. Well he he's also like He's a liability when he's on the ice. Every time he has, every, he's he was only good on the penalty kill, really. When he's five on five, he's kind of like he's there. Eh. He's like Jar when he got old. He's there. He's got a big yeah, stick he's in there. His yeah, and he, Forbert going to LTIR is good, is good for the salary cap, and I think it's good for the team because they already have eight defensemen on the team. You got Lindholm, you got Grizzlick, Lorai, Watherspoon, and then you got. McAvoy, Carlos, Shattenkirk, and now Andrew Peak. That's eight. Um, so they're going to have to make some decisions on what they're going to do. With, are they going to roll eight defensemen? I have no idea how they're going to even do that. Um, with 12 forwards and eight defensemen on your roster, as a, well, 13 and eight, you're going to have 21 on your roster, and then you have Omar and Swayman. You're a man over. So you're going to have to decide what to do. Are they going to send somebody down? I don't know. Low rise? It, was Laura and Brazza were sent down in paper transactions, but they're going to be back for the game tomorrow. Um, Peak could play tomorrow. I have no idea. I'm going, so I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be uh, experiencing a little bit of chaos. But um, I don't know. What, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> for sure, and you can find out on Sam's stream not tomorrow night, but the next few games to see what the Bruins actually end up doing. So with that. I would like to thank you all very much for watching. If you like, drop a like. If you really like, consider subscribing. Tell all your friends and leave a comment down below your thoughts on the trade deadline. Until next time, see you.